come off, it's all about Jesus. It doesn't make any difference. Is that okay with you? All right, praise the Lord, because it's not about us. Praise the Lord. Giving honor to God and to Bishop Hargrove and Lady Hargrove and all the clergy and the pulpit and all the officers here and those who are doing ministry today to my husband, Jackie Franklin. Husband, please stand up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, you can sit down now. You can sit down now. <laughs> Gotta love him, right? <laughs> But no, I love him very much. He's, he's very, been very, very good to me. You all know that um, in times of hard times, he's been there for me. And I have to always acknowledge that and acknowledge him. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I had a very busy week. We were getting the house painted. And everywhere I looked, there was a young man painting something. They were like people, strangers, all over my house. I'm not used to a lot of people in my house. And so I was kind of happy when they came happy when they left, you know, and I almost had a hard time finding a space of time to get with God on a one-on-one -on -one and share a word with you, but God always provides, and he did. He provided a, 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 a space of time where I could sit down with him on one-on-one -on -one and just ask him what did he want me to share with you today, and he wanted me to let you know that there is a refreshing coming. A refreshing is coming, okay? A refreshing means there is a victory from God that is coming. But before I begin, I'd like to just sing a little song. I wrote this song, it's a thank you song to the Lord for all he's done for me, all he's done for all of us. It's just a little song. Um, the melody is not mine. It belongs to a young man by the name of Andrew Green and he named it Love's Reply. And I don't know what inspired him to write it, but it inspired me to give a love reply to my Lord and Savior. Do you mind if I sing that for you for a second? Praise the Lord. Media ministry, please. Lord, I want to live, want to live my life, surrender to your perfect will. I thank you for your love. I wasn't faithful yet. You love me still. You saved my life, so I have to say. I give my life and I'll share your love with everyone. You gave your son and in obedience, he gave his life a sacrifice. So from my heart. just have to say thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah let's thank the Lord in here today because he has been so good to all of us not just me we all have a story we all have a song we all have something to thank God for, and I just wanted to do that today. 
before I got started, okay? Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you for listening, but I had to do that because God has been so good to me. And I'm going to tell you, he said that a refreshing is definitely coming. A refreshing is coming. It was read to you from Isaiah 43, the first and second verse, and the 19th verse. And I'm going to read them again, and then I'm going to preach from down under. In other words, the anchor verse is 19, and then I'm going to come back up to 1 and 2, okay? Is that all right? Isaiah 43, verse 1. But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. And verse 19, behold. I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Mm -mm -mm. That little part right there, rivers in the desert. How do you find rivers in the desert? Only God. Now I did a little research and I found that a river is a natural flowing water course it's usually fresh water coming from glaciers, icebergs, nice caps. And it's a water course, meaning it flows toward an ocean, a lake, maybe another river, the sea. And it's navigable, meaning you can travel on it. You know, you can go places on it. You can go places on it. And it has a purpose. And, and, and I thought about, wow, rivers, rivers in the desert, rivers, whole rivers, you know, that you can travel on in the desert. And I realized those deserts were dry places. Dry, dry, dry places. We all have had them. Hard times. Hard times. But imagine this fresh water, naturally fresh from God's creation of icebergs and ice caps, flowing on a course, taking you from place to another. You're down deep in the valley, but you've got the river. He's going to you know, give a little river for you to flow on. Every now and then something good happens while you're in the midst of that valley. Yeah. However, a river sometimes flows into the ground, and it doesn't find another body of water and it's just a dry place, a dry place. But how do we find water in a desert? Other than to say, Lord, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, which we do all the time. But I looked up some info about deserts, and this is what I found. When looking for water or a refreshing in the desert or a dry place, you first want to check the landscape. This is what it told me. It said you want to look all around you. You want to look around, see the surrounding areas. And then you want to go to higher ground. Love that part. Higher ground. Hit my heart. Our higher ground. What's our higher ground? The word of God. Prayer. Higher ground. See, from higher ground, you can see some things you might not have seen before. And while you're on that higher ground, you're also going to see some canyons and valleys. You might not want to go into canyons and valleys, but they're there. You might not want to deal with hard times. But they come, times of illness, sadness, stress. But from the vantage point of higher ground, you see these low-lying areas, and guess what? A lot of times, they actually hold more water than those vast areas. Because the vast areas may hold a wide range of water, but it's not very deep. Not very deep, OK? And, and we all know a little something to relieve anything. Physical pain, illness is better than nothing at all, you know? A little something as simple as, it could be as simple as a smile from a child. It can lift your heart in the midst of your sadness, you know? So don't dismiss the canyons and the valleys. Don't say, I don't want to go there, because you're going to go there whether you want to or not. Trust me. But, but they might hold your refreshing. They may hold your victory. So don't be afraid of the valleys and the canyons. Now, my research also revealed that low-lying areas are actually more likely to hold more water because of the water stretched out over a vast area, you know, and might not be very deep. Now, if we want a refreshing and a victory from some dry places, we need to delve deep into some deep rivers, okay? 
for me, Deep Rivers is the book of Ephesians, the sixth chapter. That's Deep Rivers for me. That's where I get my refreshing. When it talks about the 11th verse, it starts talking about putting on the whole spiritual armor of God. And it says the whole spiritual armor. See, our enemy is spiritual, and he attacks us with all kind of weapons, invisible weapons. You know, we need spiritual armor, and we need weapons to show Satan, you know, I'm not scared to fight you. I'm not scared to fight you. I have the power of God behind you. Why should I be afraid to fight you? I might not like it that I have to do it, <laughs> but I'm not going to be afraid if I have to do it. And that's what we have to let Satan know. So we put on that armor of God. Satan can't defeat you. You gird up your loins, you know, with the belt of truth. And what is the truth? Well, right back to it. Word of God. Word of God. You need to have a love of the knowledge of God. You know, go to Bible study, for God's sake. You have to have a love of the knowledge of God and a belief in the word of God. You have to have the knowledge to even believe it. And if you want to avoid becoming entangled in the lies of the enemy, you need to gird up your loins with the word. This is to protect us. And you know what? <laughs> Get ready to wrestle. I thought about this. You know, I know, you know, Pastor, he likes boxing. But the, I would think about the enemy. I said, the enemy don't go to a corner, and you go to a corner, and y'all come out boxing. He gets up close and personal. It's a wrestle. He's like all up over you. He's on you like white on rice. Okay? It's a wrestle. So get ready to wrestle because the battle is up close and it's personal. And, and I'm going to tell you why it's personal. Because when Satan messed up, they got kicked out of heaven. When Adam messed up, he sent Jesus. Satan hates us. He, he didn't get salvation, but we did. So we need to remember that. That's why he battles us. And then it says to put on the breastplate of righteousness. Because Satan will attempt your will, your heart, and your mind. So we need to dedicate ourselves to living right. Because Satan will try to feed your natural affections, like your sin nature. He'll try to feed those things. He wants to lure you away from God and your family. Young people, he wants to lure you away from God and your family. Because if he can separate you from the people who love you, don't let him. Don't let him. Dedicate yourself to living right according to the word of God. And be careful because a small distraction Become, can become a fatal attraction. Be very careful, very careful. Our higher ground is prayer and the word of God. Allow God's will to be your will. In other words, what God wants, let that be what you do. Okay? It's very simple. I like to keep things simple. You know, it sounds good. Let God's will be your will. Just do what God says. Just, just want to do what he wants you to do, you know? And you'll have protection available with the breastplate of God. Next, carefully cover your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The devil wants to weaken our commitment to Christ. But the gospel equips us with good, solid, spiritual footing. And prepare yourself for a long journey. Because it's not going to be an easy journey. It wasn't an easy journey for Jesus. It won't, might not be an easy journey for us. But trust me. There's refreshing in the midst of dry places. We all know this. You know, Satan, Satan wants to steal our hope. But be, pre be prepared to follow Jesus down a narrow path. You know how I said the path is narrow, you know? Down a narrow path. The enemy will try to throw more than rocks at you. He's going to throw great big old boulders, you know? And without the right covering, your feet won't even last that trip. Because you need to share the gospel with people. And he would love to stop you from doing that. He would love to stop you. So don't try to do this journey unprepared. Now, take the shield of faith to block Satan's fiery darts. I like the shield of faith. Satan wants to destroy our hope. I like, anybody ever see the movie Gladiator? I love that movie. I watched that movie just to see the part when the gladiators all get on one accord. They stop fighting each other. They get on one accord, and they come out there, and they put those shields up, and boom, enemy couldn't get in. I love that part. Not that I like to fight, but <laughs> I love that part. Because the enemy couldn't get in. But behind those Roman shields that they used back then, they could, when they put those shields up, it set up like a door. And they could still 
throw dart, they can still, you know, shoot the arrows at you or sling something at you. They can still fight from behind that shield, you know. So, oh, yeah, you want to put on your shield of faith to block Satan's fiery darts because he wants to destroy your hope. And all you got to do, let me tell you, a biblical shield of faith, a biblical shield of faith is believing what God has revealed. Amen. Believing what God has revealed and obeying his word. Every year, folk ask me, do you have a New Year's resolution? Yeah, same what it was last year. Obey God. Yeah. Try that for a New Year's resolution. Yeah. Obey God. Obey God. Because faith is conviction. Conviction is expressed in action. It's performed in obedience on the truth of Scripture that has been confirmed to your heart. That's why you have to have that word. You have to study and have that word in your heart. Because this is how we fight Satan. When you're strong in your faith, the fiery arrows of the enemy can't destroy you because you know the truth and you'll act upon it with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course. You'll also discern lies, accusations, all kind of stuff that's thrown at you, but you'll know it. You'll know that they're distortions of the enemy. You'll know that they're, they're not of God, but you have to do the things he says you should do. And those flaming arrows will bounce harmlessly off your shield. Mm -hmm. So keep the shield handy at all times, all times. And don't forget your helmet of salvation so Satan can't deceive your mind. You have to develop spiritually. You must study the word of God and grow in it in, to, in order to develop spiritually. Your constant appreciation of your salvation. <sighs> when I hear people say, it's okay to continue in my sin because God's going to forgive me anyway. Don't take lightly the sacrifice that Christ made for you on the cross. Amen. Don't take your salvation for granted. Put your helmet on, protect yourself. Because Satan wants your mind. You'll know when false doctrines are being thrown at you. Because if you don't, he wants your mind. If you aren't really sure about your salvation, your mind is vulnerable to attack from every side. He wants your mind. I'm going to share a story with you. Y'all know I got a story, right? I'm going to share a story with you. Okay, I have to say, I wrote a book. Some of y'all got it and read it. But in the book, I talk about a night, one night, where I thought I had lost my mind, literally. There were all these people in the room and voices, and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but some of these people got to get up out of here. I didn't know what was going on. Every time I laid down and go to sleep, I'd have a violent nightmare and wake up terrified. And I tried to rest again, and I'd go to sleep and wake up terrified from a violent nightmare. You know, so I got up out of my bed and I always kept my door closed when I was in the hospital. When something was wrong, I opened my door, opened my door <laughs> and opened my door and I put my little table by the bedside and I got out this little booklet and I'm reading healing scriptures. You know, I'm reading these healing scriptures and the Holy Spirit said, honey, you are reading the wrong scriptures. This is war. The enemy is trying to steal your mind. Let me tell you something. The enemy steal your mind. He'll have you in a pigsty just like that, you know, that prodigal son. He have you a pigsty. Your pigsty might not be a literal pigsty. It could be a pigsty. It could be a pigsty. It could be, and you're wondering how you got there. How did I get here? Because Satan wants your mind. Don't let him have your mind. And I'm gonna tell you what I did that night when he told me. I got my Bible out. I opened up the Word of God to Ephesians six. I put on the whole armor of God. I began to praise God. I began to thank God. I began to rebuke Satan in Jesus' name. And that went on till 5 o'clock in the morning. At 5 o'clock, I was exhausted. I was like, oh, Lord. I was like, Lord, have mercy. I'm tired. And I lay down on my bed, and I began to cry. You know, and I said, I want to call one of my girlfriends. And he said, no, honey, you're going to do this one all by yourself. Just you and Jesus. Get up. You're not ready yet. I got up, and I started all over again. Rebuking Satan in Jesus' name, you know, praising God, thanking him at 7 o'clock. I said, that's it. Satan, I am going to bed. I am going to sleep. I refuse to have a nightmare. I slept. I slept. I slept. I slept. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I still have half of my mind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But, but these things, these, these, these things are the words of God. 
And don't forget the sword of the spirit, because that's your, your cutting power. The word of God cuts. And there are words of God. They reveal the gospel plan that Christ that, that God has for us through Jesus Christ. And it's also the sword of the spirit. That's our, our source of our faith. The word of God is the source of our faith. Show Satan you believe God and you're ready for battle. The important word in this verse is the Greek word rhema. Some of us have heard that before. And some people just yak, yak, yak on about it. I heard a rhema word. They don't even know what it is. But the truth, <laughs> they don't. They just heard it. It sounds good. But the truth is the logos. You hear us say the logos? Well, that's the scripture and the truth about God. And it's embodied in Jesus and is written in our Bibles. And that's, that's God's plan for your life, for our lives. And it's his general revealed word. Or on the other hand, the Bible also speaks of the theme of God. You know? It's a portion of the logos. The rhema word is a portion of of the Logos that is spoken by the Holy Spirit to the heart of a believer. You know how sometimes somebody preaches something, something hits you, you get like enlightenment. You've heard it before, but all of a sudden this time it, whoa, that's your, that's your rhema word. You just got it. And what you need to do is act on it. Act on it. There's a reason why it hit you. There's a reason why God allow it to hit you. It's something that you needed personally. Act on it. Don't just say, oh, that was a good word. Now go out there and act on whatever that good word was he gave you, you know? You want victory? Then wear your armor every day. Get up in the morning and pray. Get up in the morning and start praying. Prayer will activate your armor. It will activate your armor. He said to pray. Just pray, pray, pray. And, 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 and then I continued reading about, you know, the desert and the high vantage point in the word of God. And it said to stay in the word and the will of God. And when you're looking from your higher ground, reading in that Bible, sometimes, you know, we're reading in the Bible and we're reading, but we're not ingesting it. And so sometimes we might see something look like a little puddle. You know, you're like, oh, God, what's this? What's going to happen now? But our God is an awesome God, and that little puddle may just be your deliverance. Don't dismiss those canyons and valleys. You remember I said that? There might be a little puddle in there, but that puddle might run very deep. Yeah. Very deep, okay? So sometimes you have to take a step out of your troubles. It might look a little scary. You want out, but the road to get out, it looks murky. You know, like that puddle, it looks murky. It looks unsafe. It doesn't look like you should step out in there. But remember, you put on your armor, God, you got the power of God behind you. Step out. Step out, step out. It takes a lot to say yes to surgeons who are mere mortals to crack your chest open and give you a heart operation. It takes a lot of Jesus to allow somebody to put chemo in your body. I called it poison. I was like, go ahead, give me my poison. You know, but it takes a lot of Jesus to believe that this is going to help me. I knew I had to go through a dark place. You knew you had to go through a dark place to get there, but you got there because he gave you those rivers in the desert, in that dry place. So, so, so even when you have someone, say like you have someone who's on life support, and you have to make a decision to take them off the life support, believe Jesus. It's his will if they will stay alive or not. They might stay alive and outlive you. You don't know, but God knows. So don't be afraid to step out. Put your armor on, step out. God promises a refreshing. He promises a victory. Verse 19 said, he will give you rivers of refreshing in the desert. When I was in the hospital and I was sick as a dog, I was so sick. And my friends and my coworkers and you guys, my church family, y'all showed me so much love. I cried all the time. And it wasn't because I had cancer, okay? That didn't even bother me because I knew God was going to heal me from that. But the love that I got, those were my rivers while I was in a deep, dark place. Those were my rivers. Those upheld me. I navigated on those rivers of love that I received. Thank God. I thank God for all of you. I thank God for everyone who was there for me. Because you do know he is Jehovah Jireh, our provider, right? Yeah, Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, right? We all in one accord right there, aren't we? All right, then. Well, let's move on. I'm almost done. So stop looking at the dry sand all around the cactus when you're in the desert. Because even the cactus needs a little water. 
you know. You might have to start digging, digging in the word of God, getting them, move aside those pebbles and them stones, you know, to find what God will have you to have. He'll give you wisdom, he'll give you truth, and it will refresh you. The word of God will refresh you. And last but not at all least, look out for scorpions. It said, look out for scorpions. I said, oh, yeah, because you know they're hiding out all in the middle of your victory. Them little demons, that's why you got to have your shield. <laughs> you got to have your shield, you know. Say a little, say a little scripture along with it. Oh, no, you're not. <laughs> you know? Lord is mine. You know, I'm, I'm his. So you sift through those pebbles and rocks of wisdom found in his truth. It will feed you and refresh you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. And remember Ephesians 6, put on the whole armor of God. Pray with all supplication. Big. Is Deacon Bush here? When Deacon Bush prays, I love when he prays. Because when the Holy Spirit takes over, he starts saying, Lord, we do beg. This is a man who understands the word of God, okay? But beg, be fervent in your prayer life. The fifth chapter of James says, the fervent or passionate, that means passionate, intensive prayers of the righteous availeth much. Availeth much meaning it has benefits. Benefits. <laughs> I'm a living example of that. Don't be fooled by Satan's devices, tactics, or his maneuvers. Don't be fooled by him. Your victory lies in stepping out on the word of God and the promises of God. And what did he say? In verse 19, he said, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? He's asking, are you going to recognize it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God's got your back. And now I'm going to go to verses 1 and 2. Love verses 1 and 2. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. And neither shall the flame kindle thee. When God says shall, that means it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Look at your neighbor and say, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Oh, yes, it's going to happen. You're going to have a refreshing. We're all going to have a refreshing, a victory, because God promises our refreshing is coming. It may not look like what you expect. But step into God's refreshing. Step into the victory he provides. Don't be afraid. Put on your armor of God. Study the word of God. You have to know it. It may not look like what you want. But if you believe it, it's yours. God bless you.